Welcome back folks to another archetype review. I'm Frizz and today we're going to be covering the Bounty Hunter archetype from the Advanced Player's Guide. This archetype gives abilities related to tracking down individuals and never ever letting them go. It is a great fit for an urban campaign, though it can technically work in any setting, just some of its abilities won't see as much use. Also, while some of the feats do feel pretty rangery, overall the Bounty Hunter is very distinct on its own and doesn't feel like it encroaches too much on the Ranger multi-class archetype. Without further ado, let's just get into things. The Bounty Hunter dedication is pretty simple, and it gives access to the Hunt Prey action that normally Rangers have access to. For those of you who don't know, Hunt Prey is a single action that allows you to select a single creature that you can see or hear, and then you get a plus two circumstance bonus on perception checks to seek them, and on survival checks to track them. Also, if you sh shoot at them with a ranged weapon in your second range increment, you don't take a penalty for it, so you can snipe at them from a further distance. The Hunt Prey action is changed a little bit though due to you being a bounty hunter, as you get a plus two circumstance bonus on gather information checks about your prey as well. Also, you can use Hunt Prey on someone even if you've just heard about them, seen them once in a crowd, or learned about them from a bounty board. Basically, if you know anything about someone, you can Hunt Prey, which makes you a lot, a lot better than even a normal ranger at applying Hunt Prey to someone despite having never met them before. Not only rangers have to track them, and you don't even have to do that. Whenever you take this feat, if you already had access to Hunt Prey though, you become an expert in survival, and you get the other special boost to hunt prey that normal bounty hunters get. Generally speaking, this is a very fun ability that will make you an absolute nightmare to other people that are trying to get away from you. You have to be around other people that aren't your prey to actually get the most out of the bonus to gather information, but the other benefits will be helpful in pretty much every single environment. Posse is an interesting feat that allows for you to get the rest of the party in on the hunt for your prey. While you have someone designated as your prey, you can spend a minute giving advice on how to hunt them and keep an eye out, giving a plus one circumstance bonus to track the prey, seek them, and gather information about them. You can give this bonus up to five people. In addition to all of that, you and your allies that you gave tips to get a plus one circumstance bonus on initiative checks when fighting your prey. If you ever choose someone else to hunt or your prey dies, these benefits immediately end because your tips are no longer applicable. And if someone that you gave advice to is away from you for, for like an hour or longer, they lose the benefits as they don't get the additional tips that you're presumed to give over that period of time. This is a really fun feat in that it helps you keep the whole party in on like your thing and helps bring everyone together at the table and on the role play of the situation. Also, the name being Posse is just hilariously funny. Tools of the Trade is a pretty simple feat that comes from the simple issue that oftentimes people with bounties on their head have to be brought back in alive. Doing non-lethal damage can be a bit of a pain if you aren't prepared for it, and once you take Tools of the Trade, you are always going to be prepared to knock people unconscious instead of mercilessly killing them. You become trained in bolos, saps, and whips, and whenever you increase your proficiency with any weapon, you increase your proficiency with those weapons as well. Also, you don't take any penalty for dealing non-lethal damage with any weapon, even if it doesn't have the non-lethal trait. This feat is great for basically anyone, so long as they aren't already proficient in bolos, saps, and whips, and it's also just amazing for fighters, since they can get scaling proficiency with even more weapons now. Say, if they choose bows as their preferred weapon, then they can still have melee weapons that they are very, very proficient in. It allows them to compete at multiple different ranges. Also, being able to deal non-lethal damage with any weapon is incredibly good, though you're going to have to have a pretty dang good reason why a great sword just doesn't kill the people that it hits. Keep Pace is an amazing reaction that can really mess up enemy plans, which as you'll see is kind of a theme for the remaining abilities of this archetype. Once you are near your prey, you're basically stuck to them like glue, and it will be a very, very annoying time to get away from you. As a reaction, whenever your prey attempts to move away from you, while they're within your reach, you just follow them. You stride up to your speed, keeping them within reach the entire time. You keep on going until you run out of movement, or your prey stops. 
So effectively, if they have a faster movement speed than you, they can get away from you. But if you're faster, they can't. Also, you can do this with any other movement speeds that you might have. So if you can climb, and that is if you have a climb speed, you can follow someone if they're climbing away from you. This is a great way to mess up enemy plans, and staying next to people who absolutely do not want to be next to you is a great game plan overall. Opportunistic grapple is exactly what it sounds like. An opportunistic grapple. As a reaction, whenever your prey critically fails on a melee strike against you while they're within your reach and you have a hand free, you can make an athletics check against their fortitude DC to grapple them. This is amazing so long as you have a decent or better athletics, as grappling is super frustrating to deal with for an enemy, especially if it interrupts whatever they have planned for the turn. Grappling is generally very, very good, and being able to do it without spending one of your own actions is amazing, even if, you know, they aren't all that likely to critically fail in their attack rolls. Plus, a bounty hunter would be careful to make sure that the target wouldn't even have a chance to get away, given the opportunity to make sure that it can't happen. Double Prey is normally a level 12 ranger feat, but if you are not a ranger, then you can still get it at level 14 if you take this archetype, and it frees up your action economy so so much. Now whenever you use Hunt Prey, you can pick up to two creatures to hunt instead of just one. This is going to save you so many actions in combat, since you'll probably have to use Hunt Prey half as many times, which is using half as many actions. It's nice and simple, and it doesn't need to be any more flashy. This was amazing as a 12th level feat, and it's still incredibly, incredibly good for a 14th level one. Overall, I do really like the Bounty Hunter. It does share some themes with the Ranger, but it doesn't overlap too much on a lot of mechanical fronts. It is more just the kind of idea of focusing on a single target, which is kind of the Ranger's thing. I feel like you have a lot of really good reasons to actually build a Ranger with the Bounty Hunter archetype, which isn't true for some other archetypes that are basically just evolutions of other classes. Like, if you're a rogue, you don't have nearly as much of a reason to play with the assassin archetype than if you were a ranger to play with a bounty hunter archetype. Basically, there is a little bit of overlap, but there is enough distinctness in there that I feel like that overlap is hardly meaningful. Generally, it's a very fun idea for a character, and it's also executed mechanically incredibly well, which is always a good combination. Thanks for watching and getting to the end of the video. I hope that you've been able to learn something from this and maybe found an idea for your next character. You don't actually have to use this archetype to play a bounty hunter, as you can just say that your character is a bounty hunter, but it certainly does help add a bit of mechanical flair to the flavor of your character. Also, I hope that the actual quality of the video hasn't dropped at all, since I've started a new job and I am exhausted. If you have any constructive criticism or literally anything else to say, I'd be happy to hear you down below as I do read all of the comments. A like, comment, or subscribe does do a lot for the channel since it pleases the YouTube overlords above. Until I see you next, live a wonderful life.